Uh, just running around a bunch of hacks out there. It's not worth uh, destroying Delaney and Kevin's car. I mean, the guys out there, I mean, you got guys like David Green, who's won those championships, and I like him. I like Ashton Lewis. He ran over us once, so I give him the same business, and that's why we spun. I mean, I did it to myself. I was the cause of that problem, but uh, just getting tired of getting run into by a bunch of guys that really don't know what they're doing. So uh, it's just Richmond. I mean, they're they're all out there fighting for spots just like we are. They got every right to race hard. So uh, just uh, not a fun night. I mean, when your car's not driving good anyway, and uh, then you're racing with guys in the, in the mid pack or back of the pack like that, it makes for an ill night. And I just said, before we destroy this thing, I'm just going to park it. I've had all the fun I can stand for one night. <laughs> Johnny Sauter told me before this race, he said, I do this as a hobby. I run the truck series as a hobby, but it's getting so competitive that it's not even fun anymore. And when he had that problem, the loose pump at the beginning of the race, and he went three laps down, he told his crew he wanted to call it quits because he knew it wasn't he wasn't going to win. But he went back out there. He's fighting his way back up front. Now he has another penalty to pay to NASCAR. Look at him. He's quitting, too. Yeah, yeah he's going to park it right now. He's already two laps down. He's got another drive through penalty. He's going to take it straight to the garage. Dick Trickle brought this brand new car to Homestead this weekend. Thought everything was going to be great until he stepped on the gas for the first time, and it has been wicked loose ever since. This morning, he said this thing has been trying to crash for two days. Well, they beat on the back of it with hammers. They pushed it out with Porta Powers, trying to aerodynamically adjust it. Trickle has just thrown the towel in. He says, rather than crash, I'll park it. Let him reskin it. We'll try it another day. Well, I guess uh, Clint Boyer spins me, and uh, they want to give me a penalty, so we'll park it. I couldn't even hardly steer it back to the garage area. Got it back and couldn't turn into my own garage stall, so um, I went ahead and, you know, came over the radio, told everybody, I think this, you know, this, is up, this thing's done, and didn't hear a, uh, you know, confrontation from that, so I just figured they were just going to work on it, load it up, but, um, you know, I was in a great deal of discomfort. Felt like I got pretty much beat up from two pretty heavy crashes over the weekend so I uh, was changing my clothes nobody came in and discussed anything with me so I just went back to my motor home and loaded up and headed to the airport. I was told 10 minutes before the race started that I would be forced to start and park by the owner mandating a black flag so the car could be ready for California. Then I was told that he was breaking the contract with me and that I would not be racing in California and I feel like God has given me the opportunity to race in that Obviously, he's uh, a little upset with himself, I think, in this case. And uh, he said he hit the kill switch, and that killed the motor. And uh, when you're not running for points, you know what? It's not even worth trying to go back out there, guys. 